Uh, hey everybody, it's Keith, and uh, just thought it might be good to connect a little bit, go live, um, see what everybody's up to, how everybody's feeling. So I thought I might just talk a little bit and uh, share some thoughts, and if you have some comments or whatever, feel free to uh, share those below. It's uh, just more important than ever that we stay connected, and this is one of the ways that we can do that even while we're uh, self-isolating and all of that. So I um, wanted to share some thoughts um, from a book that I really love called Station Eleven, uh, which is a dystopian fiction. It's very strange that um, I like digital ministry and dystopian fiction, and so those the combination of those two things actually <laughs> is quite helpful in these moments, uh, unexpectedly. And uh, the book Station Eleven came out about six years ago. It's by uh, Emily St. John Mandel. And uh, it's a story about how a global pandemic uh, devastates the world way worse than um, coronavirus, way more devastating. But um, in the midst of that devastation, there are so many hopeful things that happen in this book. So uh, without giving too much away, there's a group of survivors that form and they form a traveling orchestra. And they have a caravan and they travel between small towns uh, with the remaining survivors and they play music and they do uh, theater. So they travel around, they do music and theater and um, they have this motto, which I think is stolen from Star Trek, called um, survival is insufficient. And so they want to bring art and beauty and joy and distraction to those people who are um, the survivors of this pandemic. Uh, And it just got me thinking like, you know, we're at a moment right now where we're just trying to figure out what we need to get from the store and how we're gonna settle in for a couple weeks at least and those kinds of things. Um, So at the moment, we're just figuring out how are we gonna, you know, start to be in this space. But it's really important that we transition from that to finding the good things that are happening, the beautiful day that we have today, um, time with our family, time to slow down, uh, to recognize that by stepping out and self-isolating, we're loving and serving our neighbors. Um, And there were three hopeful things that I wanted to share today that made me so glad in the midst of all of this. So number one, I received an email from one of our members who was concerned about um, some of our members in nursing homes because those are among the most vulnerable uh, people Uh, at this time and she delivered uh, small potted plants to all of them. She couldn't take them in. The security person had to take them from her, take them into the facility, but they delivered these uh, plants to each one of our uh, folks at this retirement community and they were so delighted to be remembered and know that they're loved and we're thinking of them, especially as they're more more vulnerable than um, the rest of us. So that was really special. Um, today, all of our things are canceled at church, but uh, our people felt so uh, called to continue to serve uh, people who are hungry and homeless in Philadelphia. So we have a group of people uh, who are serving at Chosen 300, which we do every month. We take food down uh, to uh, Philadelphia to give a good meal to people who are living on the streets, who are hungry. And uh, that is another hugely vulnerable population is the homeless population. Uh, at, with this virus because they have nowhere to self-isolate. Uh, and so they're taking all the precautions outlined by Chosen 300 to do that. We're serving with another congregation, uh, but that's a very hopeful thing that's happening today. And then I got a note, number three, I got a note from somebody uh, who's on our church mailing list, but not a member of our church. And just because um, we've been updating people on our coronavirus response uh, and just sent a nice note back thanking us for what we were doing in that regard and uh, actually made a donation to our church (laughs) Um, because, uh, you know, I think one of the things that is the least important thing, but uh, congregations know that by closing and and everything, it's going to make a difference in our giving and and how we go about that. That's the least important thing, but it was a very kind gesture from somebody that's not even a member of our church uh, to do that. So, you know, that's like three hopeful things today, which is a good day in any situation, and it's a really beautiful thing when you're talking about, um, you know, kind of how we stick together during this time of uh, pandemic. So um, good things are out there. 
you know, survival is insufficient. Let's keep reaching out to each other. Let's keep helping one another in the ways that we are able. Um, hopefully this is one of those ways. Uh, we have worship we're doing online, like almost every other church at this point, tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Uh, the easiest way to find it is on our website. We'll be streaming to our website. Uh, but there's, uh, we started a coronavirus response blog with the last three updates that I've sent out to my church. Um, that's also linked to uh, our website at the front of the website. So you can kind of read back and see just how quickly this week has developed and the changes that we're trying to make uh, very quickly to make sure we make sure everybody is as safe as possible. Um, how are you doing out there? Well, what's, what's going on for you? Uh, I see a lot of congregations kind of swiftly making changes across the country. Um, we're kind of in this place of uh, some people are self-isolating, other people are uh, not sure whether they should take it quite so seriously. It's um, everything's happened so quickly. Um, so it's on my mind that a lot of faith leaders are trying to figure out, you know, what to do, how to support their congregations. Um, we're starting to think about that now, um, ways that we can continue to gather, to stay connected, to see each other. Um, Cause that's just a huge part of what church is about is that human connection and community. Um, and we were already living in a time that was very isolating. Um, and uh, loneliness was already a pretty big problem, if not epidemic in our culture. Um, so how can we, you know, be self, uh, isolating, but also not isolated from one another. Um, so those are going to be some things that we're figuring out once we get through worship tomorrow about how we offer some things and points of connection. Um, so I'll just be doing this kind of thing, I guess, along the way as things come up, but, um, Remember to look for good things and hopeful things. The, I'm out here in the Memorial Garden at church, and, you know, it's an incredibly beautiful day, and the birds are singing, and there are buds on the trees, and, um, you know, we just need to take it a day at a time, an hour at a time, be grateful for what is, uh, not get too carried away with what will be, though we know it will be a challenge and will be hard, um, but we're in it together. Uh, so hang in there. We love you. I'm praying for all of you. Um, we're going to keep doing this kind of thing and staying in touch. Uh, and, um, yeah, I see some people are starting to leave comments. Thank you. And yeah, let's pray for, uh, doctors and medical teams who are already overwhelmed and it's going to get more overwhelming. So the more that we can be smart and self-isolate, the more that it's going to help, uh, our medical professionals respond to, uh, the needs that are going to uh, get more before they get uh, less. So this is uh, going to be a journey that we're all going to be on together and we're going to figure it out as we go. Okay. So I don't want to go on and on. I really enjoy seeing everybody's tuning in. If you're tuning in here late, maybe you can go back and watch the beginning part of it. Um, you know, this book, Station 11, you could probably order it on Amazon. Hey, it might be out. <laughs> it's, it's, it has a lot of good um, connections to what's going on uh, at the moment. But um, survival's not enough. So let's get through the next couple of days and figure out what survival or self-isolation looks like at the moment. And then let's start to think about how we reach out to one another uh, and how we hold the hope for one another. Okay. All right. You guys hang in there. Love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. So uh, why don't I close with a prayer now? So dear God, thank you for keeping us connected in this strange, strange time that we are in as we're trying to make sense of things that are happening so quickly uh, that people are stressed, anxious, panicked, overwhelmed, exhausted, uncertain, and uh, we feel all those feels. Uh, we are concerned for one another, uh, although we have to remain apart. We pray that in this time you would give us the grace to see the good things and the hopeful things. Um, give us the peace that passes all understanding. Help us to support one another in all the ways that we can. Um, help us to journey faithfully together uh, and reach out in the ways that we are able in this time. Help us to appreciate each day and each moment 
and the sounds of the birds and the breeze and the sun slow us down. We pray that this time can be a Sabbath where we draw closer to those in our families and those whom we love uh, and closer to you. And I imagine at the end of this how grateful and relieved we will be, but how much we look forward to being back together again. Bless all medical workers, bless first responders, bless those who have to work in the midst of this time, keep them safe, keep them healthy, strengthen them, and be with all of us that we would continue to pray and support and lift up and hold the hope for one another. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Okay. You guys be well, and uh, we'll talk again soon.